Hello and welcome to Tech Talks, the podcast that strips away the surface to reveal the unseen narratives in our society. I'm your host William and I'm here with Palmer and Shritha. Today we'll be taking a trip back to the night of December 26th, 1996, when one of America's most famous unsolved true crime mysteries began. The body of Jean Benet Ramsey, the six year old beauty pageant winner, was found dead in the basement of her family's Boulder, Colorado home. The subsequent media frenzy, enough to cause the family's home to be readdressed, and police investigation turned into a spectacle that many argue reflected less on the evidence and more on society's deepest prejudices and obsessions. Aside from the raw evidence found in the case, which we will later touch on, there are a plethora of factors on just exactly why this case became so popular and what exactly went wrong in the solving of this case. Let's start by talking about the big issue, media sensationalism. It came out that John Binet participated in a number of beauty pageants per her mother's will, and when these tapes went public, the world saw more than a simply a little girl. Instead, it saw a narrative tailor-made for gossip columns and tabloids. We also can't talk about this popularity without addressing the socioeconomic angle as well. The Ramses were affluent. Their social status seemed to paint the investigation in shades that many believe wouldn't be used for an average family. Some even say that this is why the case is still unsolved, the family having the influence to hide what happened and the motive to do so. Even so, the world of child pageantry itself came under scrutiny too. Was the public's discomfort a reflection of a broader unease with the sexualization of young girls? And is the sexualization the reason for the widespread fame of the case, and maybe why it's still unsolved today? Here's our take. John Binet's case did capture a degree of attention because of its ambiguity. However, only because Ramsey was a pretty, young, and white girl whose beauty pageants went viral upon her death did this case bring national attention to what should have been a straightforward case. But before we dive deeper into the pile of lies, we have a quick message from one of our partners, the reason we're here today, Price Gilbert's Audio Studio. If you are ever in need of some state-of-the-art audio recording facilities, look no farther than your very own library studio. And here's the best part, it's completely free. Just log on to libcal.library.gatech.edu and reserve a time, and you're one step closer to being on the other side of Tech Talks. Thanks, Shritha. As a precursor to the nitty-gritty of this case, it's important to keep in mind the different theories surfing the web about this crime, most of which we will touch on. These are, the brother Burke did it, the parents did it, or an intruder did it. But before getting into these issues, we really want to spell out just how strange the circumstances of this case were. Like we said, Jean Benet was found deceased in the basement of her home. Strangely enough, there was no sign of forced entry into the house, making it seem like it was obviously the family. However, this can't be said for sure, as the police department didn't exactly do a great job in preserving the crime scene. For example, during the evaluation of the crime scene, when the investigators were trying to gather evidence such as footprints, fingerprints, and all those vital details, the Ramses had company over all the while, which is an obvious fault that could have altered any evidence that may have been there. Any footprints in the carpet could have been messed up, as well as fingerprints rubbed off in common places such as doorknobs. On top of this, Linda Arndt, the lead detective on the scene, allowed Jean Benet's father, John Ramsey, to search the house alone. If he had anything to do with this crime at all, he obviously could have altered evidence. Not helping this case, he then went on to find Jean Benet in the basement and carried her upstairs, which also could have destroyed crucial evidence. Wow, I can't even imagine an investigation being carried out like that today. It just doesn't make any sense. 
I feel like it's common sense to not contaminate a crime scene, and it honestly reflects just as bad on the Ramses as it does on the detectives themselves. The worst part is that this isn't even the fishiest thing about the case. There's so, so much more. Aside from this, the evidence the police did manage to kind of retain didn't really add much significance either. For example, as in most kidnappings, there was a ransom note found by the family, which is how they say they knew to call the police. Strangely enough, though, it was written with the pages of a notepad from the house itself, meaning that if the crime was done by an intruder, they wrote the note inside of the house. Wait, wait, wait. This makes no sense, right? Why would the intruder take the time to write a note inside the house, fully at risk of being seen by the family? Also, if Jean Benet was found dead inside the house, why would an intruder write a ransom note for a murder? It just doesn't make sense, and I feel like it kind of represents the gray area that would haunt this case. Yeah, I know, but keeping that in mind, it seems really convincing that a family member had something to do with the crime and tried to stage it as a kidnapping. Even so, investigators were never able to match the handwriting of the family members to the note, even demanding five handwriting samples from John Bonnet's mother, Patsy Ramsey. It's one of those things that should have gotten the investigation somewhere, but simply didn't. So, the ransom note didn't even really get the police much closer than they already were to finding a suspect. Moving on from this, another key piece of the puzzle is the undigested pineapple the police found in the stomach of John Bonnet, indicating that she ate pineapple that night. However, John and Patsy said that they did not feed her pineapple the night of the 25th, and that she went straight to bed upon arriving home. However, in the images taken by the detectives, a bowl of pineapple and a glass of sweet tea were found to be left out on the table overnight, with the brother, Burke's, fingerprints on the glass of sweet tea. This strongly suggests that John Bonet ate pineapple that night, which is important in that it points out the inconsistencies in the Ramsey's story. So, while this lead was not followed up as strongly as it should have been, it still strongly suggests that Burke at least saw his sister later than his parents, which we'll discuss more later. You know, that just leaves me so in disbelief that such important leads were not followed up on or didn't lead anywhere. I mean, Burke clearly saw his sister late that night, especially since a six-year-old isn't going to make a bowl of pineapple by herself. Even so, he wasn't considered at all to be a suspect in the case, as the police had almost fully placed their bets on Patsy, likely due to the public attention on the fact that she was pushing her daughter into beauty pageants. Yes, but wait, there's even more. The 911 call made by Patsy that night turned out to be crucial in determining if the Ramses were a credible source and what happened to their daughter or not. Here's the deal. The Ramses swore that their son was asleep the whole night throughout the ordeal, only waking up when the investigators began searching the house in the morning. However, amidst Patsy's frantic voice in the 911 call, Steve Thomas, the lead investigator, made an interesting observation in his book called John Bonet Inside the Ramsey Murder Investigation. He claims that if you enhance the end of the call, you can hear Burke's voice saying, What did you find? We'll play this clip here. Patsy. 
as you may hear, those words are there. While the significance of what these words actually mean may or may not be as important, the thing is that if this is true, if the clip is real, the Ramses were lying right from the start, only adding to the pile of evidence against them. Hey Tech Talkers, we're excited to partner with Audible, the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks. Whether you're into captivating sci-fi, gripping mysteries, or fascinating non-fiction, Audible has a versatile selection available for you. With Audible, you can listen to your favorite books anytime, anywhere, whether you're driving, working out, or simply relaxing at home. Here's the best part. As listeners of our podcast, you get a 30-day free trial and a free audiobook of your choice. Simply go to audible.com slash tech talks. So what are you waiting for? Dive into the world of storytelling with Audible. Happy listening! So where does all of this leave us? All of this leaves us wondering who did it. We have a lack of competency by the detectives on the scene, a ransom note may be pointing to a cover-up by Patsy, and a handful of things that don't exactly look great for Burke either, such as the pineapple and the 911 call. Is it possible that Patsy did accidentally kill John Bonet in a fit of rage fueled by a mere bedwetting incident and had to cover it up? Yes but we'll also go into detail on just why we think this likely isn't so after exploring what we believe to be the more viable option. To us, it seems clear that the suspect was in the house and that Burke played a much larger role in the murder of his sister than the public made it out to be. The fact that there are so many inconsistencies in the Ramsey's story and evidence really makes it seem like they aren't telling the truth. And what other reason for that than to cover something up? What likely happened is that Burke accidentally, or purposefully, we can't really know, killed his sister, hitting her over the head. Then, Patsy and John helped cover it up, staging it as an intruder that broke in and assaulted and killed their daughter. Harsh as it sounds, this accounts for the widest variety of evidence, meaning not just focusing on one piece of evidence, such as the ransom note, and attempting to force a conviction on Patsy. Yeah, but if we think this is so clear, you may ask why so much attention was paid to Patsy, and why a case wasn't formed against Burke if so much evidence exists against him. Well, we say it's because of you. Well, not specifically you, but the public in general at the time of the crime. The moment it came out that Patsy put John Bonet in beauty pageants, and these videos were leaked, it was over in terms of this being a normal local child kidnapping and homicide. The public quickly latched onto this fact, attempting to rationalize what happened considering these details. Because of this flaunty, almost disturbingly sexual nature of these child beauty pageants, it became far too easy for the public and police department to say, she did it, she killed her daughter. If she was capable of pushing her daughter to unimaginable feats as a six-year-old, why couldn't she kill her daughter, accident or not, out of a fit of disappointment or anger? Maybe it was an image thing, But there's nothing the public loves more than someone who puts on a beauty pageant-worthy front on the inside, but has a deep, dark secret behind the curtains. Still today, the unresolved nature of Jean Benet's murder feeds into our collective obsession with true crime. We're drawn to the mystery, the theories, the idea of solving the unsolvable. We like the way Harold Schechter, a true crime author and professor at Queens College, phrased it, claiming, quote, It's the story, the characters, the setting. The Jean Bonnet case has a lot of the elements of the closed room mystery. Everybody's home, no apparent break-in. In general, true crime speaks to these very dark places in our heads that none of us would consciously admit to, end quote. It's for this reason that the public is still fascinated with the case nationwide today. And it's for this reason that things such as the Ramsey's house being readdressed have had to occur. Even Burke Ramsey was interviewed by Dr. Phil 20 years after the crime happened. Thanks for tuning in. Next week, we'll be back with another episode that delves deeper than the crime scene tape 
into the heart of the social dilemmas that shape our world today. My name is William Sugden and this is Tech Talks.